Pat tells me you've managed to decode some of the German U-boat messages. Uh, uh, yes, I, for a time we thought we'd done it, but uh, now it seems the Germans have improved the Enigma machine, so we're going to have to find a new way in. Well, we'll do it, Knox, but uh, we need <laughs> faster machinery. Well, at least the government is properly aware of how important your work is. The geese who lay the golden eggs. Isn't that what Churchill said? Oh, well, you meant all of us. You in particular. This is very flattering, Knox. You're making me feel uneasy. Oh, why's that? Well, I sense a sting in the tail approaching. Well, not a sting, exactly. Uh, I gather you've been chaining your tea mug to the radiator. Oh, that's not an unreasonable precaution. Tea mugs are in very short supply. Mm, some people find it irritating. Well, I find it irritating that some people should be irritated. I do think you might be a little more discreet. What about my tea mug? About this young engineer chap you've got working with you. Tongues are beginning to wag. Am I in for a lesson in morals? In common sense. I mean, I don't give a tuppenny damn whether you choose to go to bed with choir boys or cocker spaniels, but uh, it would be wiser to keep your private life to yourself. Is this an official reprimand? Friendly advice, nothing more. I, I mean, first things first. What we are doing here, and most especially what you're doing here, uh, has a direct and crucial bearing on the progress of the war. Uh, well, a, a pretty young engineer comes a rather poor second to that, surely. I thought you said rules only mattered in cricket. Oh, it's such nonsense, this contemporary obsession with sexual fulfillment. Passion is dreadfully overrated, if you ask me. Uh, one is happiest when sex is a dimly remembered pleasure, like mm, climbing apple trees or building sandcastles. Well, you can hardly expect me to agree with that. Well, like all of us, I can only speak from personal experience. I've been happily married for over 20 years, and I'm glad to say that passion has never played a significant role in our relationship. Understanding and companionship can be relied upon. Passion is forever fleeting. Well, perhaps one brief moment of passion is worth more than 20 years of uneventful companionship. I didn't say it was uneventful. Anyway, we're not talking about me, we're talking about you. Yes. I hear you're not very well. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. I'm changing the subject. A, a, a great many people, administrators and the military alike, regard Bletchley as a hotbed of anarchy and unruliness. They pray for an excuse to bring us to heel. Well, they're small-minded, petty, spiteful. Maybe. What, what is the, the point of having a system that gives authority to people who don't deserve it? You say I complained. Good God, of course I complained. Nothing was being done. You know that as well as I do. Nobody understood the scale of the problem. I mean, it wasn't just a question of more staff, more money. We needed new ideas, electronics, an industry. I absolutely... Bugger all was being done about it. If I hadn't written to Mr. Churchill, if I had gone through the usual so-called proper channels, we'd all be stuck here twiddling our thumbs, getting nowhere fast. Do these people know how Churchill replied to my letter? Do they? Make sure they have all they want on extreme priority. I know. That is what he wrote. I know. Action d d this day. I know. And I'm not saying you did the wrong thing. I'm only trying to explain why such unorthodox methods are bound to cause a considerable upset. All that matters is the work we do. Differences of attitude, differences of personality should not enter into it. They shouldn't, but they do. Well, then they should be ignored. <laughs> you can't go through life ignoring the effect you have on other people, or, or the effect other people have on you. Well, you can try. All right. Let me give you an example. A few minutes ago, you inquired after my health. Supposing... I'd said that I'm mortally ill and that I've only a year or so to live. Supposing I'd broken down and wept. Supposing I'd opened my heart to you and said that I have no wish to die, that I am frightened and in despair. Well, I can't believe you would have welcomed such a disclosure. I feel sure you would have found it distressing. 
embarrassing, somewhat inconsiderate. Uh, and so, having regard for your feelings as well as my own, it, it would seem to be both correct and uh, appropriate for me to moderate my response. Are you dying? Uh, similarly, <clears throat> well, so it seems to me. When you reveal the nature of your sexuality, uh, you cannot afford to ignore the effect you're having on other people. Uh, fear, for example, when people are asked to accept something they do not understand. Or anger, when what you so unashamedly reveal uh, is contrary to everything they've ever believed in. And pain bound to cause a lot of pain. Uh, not yourself, necessarily, that's your affair anyway, but to people who are close to you. Anyone who's fond of you. Pain, real pain. Uh, well, I think perhaps I will have a drink after all. Um, you sure I can't persuade you? No, thank you. Your friend Wittgenstein once wrote something that impressed me deeply. I sat down, down and there, with a book in my hand, and memorized what he'd written. This is what he said. We feel that even when all possible scientific questions have been answered. The problems of life remain completely unanswered. <laughs>